the champ is here, ladies and gentlemen, on Saturday night, early Sunday morning, down in Miami in front of a raucous fan base that was on Sugar's side. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, weigh-ins, maybe not. I wonder if this man who's about to join us thought to himself, oh, they don't like they don't like the Sugar Show down here, then goes into arena, big, we're here for the Sugar Show. Oh, yeah. Superstar already, superstar of the future for UFC, Bantamweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Yeah. Yeah. What up, boys? Hey. It was fun to watch you work on Saturday, bro. I stayed up for that thing until, like, because uh, the spring forward situation felt like I was up until 4 a.m. Yep. or whatever. I don't even know how you handle your day-to-day, -day, and I know you're on Arizona time, so I guess the time zone's not that big of a, a mess, but you picked them apart, dude. It was fantastic to watch. Joe Rogan, D.C., everybody in basically talking was like, this is your finest performance. Do you agree with that, looking back on it, watching the film? Do you feel like this is the best you've been? Yeah, that fight was really fun. I mean, that stylistic matchup's always fun for me. I feel like I'm faster than everybody, but I knew I was way faster than Cheeto. So for me, you know, I knew I was gonna. I knew that fight was gonna play out like that. I just had to show up and perform at my best and do what I do, and I always do that. So you know, I kind of figured that fight was gonna play out like that. Was it my best performance? Yeah, it was probably up there. Didn't get the finish. Doesn't sit quite well with me. You know, I'm I'm over it. It's fucking the finish is what I like. So it is what it is. Yeah, and I saw you. Okay, so let's dive into it because I heard Tim Timbo uh, going into the fifth round, and I don't know how much you're listening in between rounds as they're putting ice on you. That's fascinating to watch it all take place. But he was saying going into the fifth round, hey, bud, this thing's won. Stick and move. Let's stay out of it so we don't lose this thing. Is that because there was a thought like when you land that knee on his face as clean as you did? Ooh. Oh, listen to this, Sean. Listen to this. Oh, listen to this. Oh. Oh. When you lay in that, it's it, gross. It's gross. When, when afterwards you said you felt something broken there, mm -hmm. but when he doesn't go down there, do you think to yourself like, okay, this is going to go the entire fight if this walking cement truck doesn't go down to that? Is there a thought of that while you land that and he doesn't go down? Um. Yeah, I knew. I knew like. I know how durable he is. I know how tough some people can be that they just don't go away. Obviously, that Chris Montino, that green hair, green hair dude, <laughs> another guy that just some people just don't go away. So you just can't waste all your energy trying to put him out after you get him hurt. And I'm a vet. I've been in the sport for a long time. I'm very good with my energy. And I understood that, you know, if he didn't go down from that, he's going to be tough to put him, put him away. So. You know, I made sure I didn't waste all my energy on that, trying to put him out of there, but very fucking impressive uh, chin on him. Yeah, I'd say. Um, whenever he's trying to make it dirty late is how DC and Rogan were describing it, trying to make it dirty late. He he seemed to connect one or two on you. Did you feel that or no? Did he did he get close to hitting you late? Uh, He didn't hit me once. He, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, he, he landed a couple decent shots. Nothing that really rocked me. Um, uh, yeah, no, nothing really landed super clean. A lot of the punches I was at take, I was kind of you know going with. Um, I mean, he hurt my hands if anything. So <laughs> that Moutinho fight, we remember talking to you afterwards. Yeah. Look at my hands, man, from beating up a guy's yeah. face. Broken. That guy's face was an actual weapon for him. It felt like Cheeto yeah. was the same exact thing. Look at this. Look what you did to him, though. I mean, you were piecing him apart. Uh, obviously, your goal, I think you've told us before, is I want to hit the other guy, and I want to knock that hit. That was, that, that was mm -hmm. kind of how you described it. A lot of people are questioning your cardio. Can this guy last five rounds into the championship rounds? Felt like you felt good, didn't you? You felt good late? Felt like. Yeah. Yeah, I think we answered that question. I mean, I can keep that kick, kind of kickboxing pace all day. Uh, so, yeah, answered that question. But it's crazy to think about. I fought Cheeto for five rounds. I fought Chris Montino for three rounds. And I landed more shots on Chris <laughs> Montino than I landed on Cheeto, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, so, yeah, just handing out brain damage. Not proud of it, but, it, you know, I'm making money, getting paid to do it. It pays the bill. He's got a sick robe on right now, dude. Great robe. Are you still down in Miami? Yeah, so. No, we left. We left 2 p.m. Uh, flew straight home, and and we're back. It's so weird laying in bed Saturday, 
7 p.m. I'm just laying in bed all day waiting for the fight to roll around. I'm fighting at 12.30 in the morning on Sunday. So Saturday, I just am laying in bed all day. But it's so weird to think about Saturday, 7 p.m. I'm laying in bed thinking in 24 hours, Sunday at 7 p.m., I'm going to be laying in bed at home in Arizona, and it's going to be all said and done. And it's such time, such a weird thing, especially that fight week and fight day. But uh, yeah, I'm pumped with pumped with how it turned out. Well, yeah, it was a wild 24 hours. I'd assume to fly from Miami to Arizona. What else? Oh, beat up a guy for five rounds. Yep. Just beat up a guy yep. for five rounds in the middle of it. Uh, the whole press week leading up to it. You know, the press conference the day before or two days before, you're getting booed a little bit out of Miami. Were you playing heel? Did you know it was going to be the sugar crowd? Because it was, obviously. We all saw yeah. it. What were your thoughts going into Miami and the crowd that was down there? Felt electric all week in Miami. Felt electric. Yeah, that was a perfect place for, for me versus Cheeto to happen. In Miami, he had a lot of the Latin American community coming together. You know, it would have been cool for them to have a first Ecuadorian. I just call him Dorians as a champ. So he had a lot of a lot of that those reporters out there, and uh, so I, you know, I figured it was going to kind of be like that. It w- it was cool. I didn't mind it. I could fight in Spain in Elia's hometown and have nobody there going for me and still perform. So I'm not worried about that. But it is cool when the Sugar fans come together in Miami, in Boston, in Vegas, wherever we go. And uh, the, the Sugar fans will be there. Yeah, Connor's going to ask you about Ilya call out because obviously afterwards there was a lot of interactions you had in the walkout, in the behind the scenes of the arena. You had a boot on. We know there was that stomach shot late. When do you get hurt and do you just play it off well? Like, what? Because I think last fight you had like three different things that were like broken, but we couldn't really tell in the fight. How'd you come out of this fight? Do you have any surgeries or anything needed? And when do you think, you know, Ilya or Marab or who was it? Uh, Henry Cejudo, I think, mm-hmm. came over to you in the middle of an interview with a British TV. It feels like everybody would like to fight you. <laughs> that Every- little, that, that yeah. was a long time ago when Henry did that. That was a little bit more when he was relevant. Henry's got to be the number one dumbest, okay. shortest okay. champion that has ever lived. He's oh. so stupid. Okay. Every time he talks, <laughs> I think he's getting dumber. The dude is so stupid, and, and I cannot believe he won a championship belt. He talks and he talks. He says some of the dumbest shit ever. Okay. So, but yeah, that was a long time ago. He's really dumb and short. Uh, but yeah, I had a couple of run-ins. Marab came up to me, was congratulating me. I said thank you. I thought it was a fan. I didn't even recognize him. And then he said, "You got to say my name." And I was like, "Oh shit, that's Marab." I completely, it's you know, I didn't realize. I thought it was just someone saying good job. Yeah. Uh, just got out of a fight. So, uh, just got out of a fight. You know, yeah, a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, the dude's nose is so crooked and, uh, you know, very well. Mrab 100% could be next. If Mrab's next, I would love to do it in the Sphere in Vegas. Um, if Ilya's next, I would love to do it in Spain. I'm not ducking either of them. I don't care. I've called out Ilya because he's scarier than Mrab. Like, Mrab's a very, very dangerous opponent. He's got crazy gas tank. Name his last three fighters. He could. Yeah, he's right. boring. He's, he's not like a fucking superstar, but he has a 10 fight win streak. And he's done it so many times that it is there is something to it. To you know, it's completely opposite of my style. I'm striking, stand up, fun to watch, quick, fast. He's so boring and uh, takes people down. So there is something there, and uh, people want to see me lose because I'm the fucking man. Yeah. So I get it. You know, they want to see me just lose. So they're like, "Well, put Mrab on him." So if that's next, cool. You know, UFC, we'll, we'll talk soon and, and figure it out. Well, hey, people wanting to see you lose is good box office. There's also a lot of people that want to see you fight because, as you said, you're entertaining, you're electrifying. Two-time main event now, right? Second-time main event. You have Boston and you have Miami. Yep. Places filled, places packed. I assume the numbers are going to come out Oof. that they're big. We got a chance to talk to you over your entire run here from back in the empty apex where you're knocking people out, doing fadeaway threes in the middle of it where we became yep. fans, to now your main event marquee selling out arenas. Congrats, bro. Yeah. Hey, it feels good. Got to feel good, right? You're in the middle of it right now. It does feel good. you know. And I've, I was, I've been very confident in myself and my skills and believed in myself that I was – I was saying this before I was in the UFC. I was in the Contender Series to get into the UFC. I said, trust me, I'm going to be in these positions. Not, and it's just, you know, I've been able to go out there and put on performance after performance after performance. And, uh, yeah, it's just been a lot of hard work and, and just dedicating my life to this sport. You know, I'm in a really, really cool, cool, cool position. Yeah, you and Timbo is cool, too. 
you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's some videos of him after the fight where it looked like he was willing to fight some people if they needed it, <laughs> yeah. you know? And it's like, you guys are a cool partnership, man. That's a cool thing. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... We have really good chemistry. We uh, we lived together for like five years as we were coming up. I was just turning pro. He was already pro. He was trying to get into the UFC. I was trying to, you know, build up a pro record. And, and we lived together for like four or five years at the time. So we built a cool relationship. And, uh, you know, it's, it's important to have someone you trust so much in your corner like that. Uh, really, my whole team, my whole corner, everyone plays an important role. But, yeah, we, we, got a, we have a really cool squad. And, uh, you know. We're, we're taking over. Yeah, you guys are killing it. It's fun to watch. He's got that call flyer here, too, oh, yeah. uh -huh. from top to bottom. You know, he turns his head. It's like, yep, not a guy. Don't yep. want to. Let's not accidentally <laughs> piss off that that redheaded man right there, let alone the fact that he's got the full UFC kit on. D-Butt's got a question yeah. for you about that whole process. Definitely avoid not. But uh, talk about the process, kind of comparing it to football a little bit. But you talked about the styles of the different fighters. How much, uh, I guess, film study or how much do you watch these fighters before you fight them? And then post-fight, like how much of your fight do you watch after, um, after a you know, knockout or a big match? I've watched the fight three times since. Um, I, I really enjoy re-watching my masterpieces and uh <laughs> so I, i've always enjoyed that i spar when in camp a couple times a week well i usually spar once a week in camp i'll go and watch those i'll watch them in slow motion sometimes because so fucking fast i don't even know what i do i have to <laughs> slow it down um but as far as who i watch or how much of my opponent i watch i don't watch a ton i watch a little bit just enough to know i'm like okay i'll whoop this dude's ass so sometimes a minute or two and i'm like okay I got. I kind of downloaded everything I need to know. He's too slow. I'm gonna piece him up. So that's usually how that goes. Tim watches more of the film, more of the, more of that. But mm -hmm. I mean, the last two fights, we've pretty much just had a game plan and perfected it. And it's been a, you know, at the higher levels, we kind of have a game plan more so. Is coming up, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go out there and do what I do, do what I do, what I do. Now we got these, you know, these game plans specific for these opponents, and it's uh. It's fucking fun. Yeah, it's brilliant. We're at six now. The um, when the person you're sparring weekly, are they trying to fight like Cheeto? Do you know that? Yeah, we, I mean that's the plan. That's kind of ideal. Everyone's helping everyone. Um, so when I obviously have a big fight coming up, you know, we bring in sparring partners. Tim will kind of give them, you know, have them watch Cheeto too, leading up to sparring. He'll watch it in the back before we spar. He'll kind of say, "Hey, do do." do these little tendencies that that he does and and yeah they try to emulate him as much as possible but for the most part it's you know sparring is just getting that cardio getting that push did you want a spinning heel kick on him was there a way you wanted to end it did you have any merch for because what was it another right hand from sugarland one of your first <laughs> fights for on mm -hmm. ufc you had to get knocked out but it was with a left hand yeah you let him yeah. up you said <laughs> because you wanted to finish him with the right because you had merch already made that said another right hand from Sugarland, which I think we bought 20 of yep. them or whatever. And I hope a lot of people, <laughs> did you have a way you thought that was going to end? Spinning heel kick felt like you were trying there early. Uh, yeah, I wanted, I, I just wanted any finish against someone that tough, that durable. You'll take whatever you can get as far as a finish. But, you know, going into that fight, I really, really, truly believed it was going to be a war I, I i knew how tough he was he'd never I, I i officially dropped him i don't know if they counted it or not but i think in that second or third round i put him down to a knee so hopefully they'll give me that but yeah he's, he's never been finished so i i figured it was gonna be hard but you know the shirt said the rain remains and you know we're still we're still okay. camp okay. still doing it but yeah we had those shirts ready to rock hey the rain remains tells me you knew those there's yeah. a chance this goes five. Oh, there's, yeah. there's a chance here i'm gonna try my best yep. even after timbo going into the fifth rounds like stay away from him you were still trying your out. Yeah, yeah you were trying your best it was awesome hey you're fun to watch dude i i like the thought of like you sitting there while tim's telling you like hey let's just not get pieced up here everything's good <laughs> and then you go tim I'm an entertaining fighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, these people didn't come for me to run around this damn cage. Although you could have, you could have, you crushed yeah. him. It was like a not uh, like unanimous too. Mm -hmm. Everybody in there. Fun night. Fun night, Sean. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Sean. How was the process with the weight cut for this fight? I think one of the last times we talked to you, you were like, "Hey, listen, cutting weight sucks, but it kind of is what it is. It's part of the gig." Um, but but you didn't tire at all. You looked your cardio looked great all five rounds. Um, what like? What did you end up actually weighing when you fought on Saturday night? Because every time you fight, too, like 
you look massive compared to these guys in your division. Um, so what, like, is, is that part of like the, Hey, I don't know if I want to keep cutting and staying here. Um, what, what did you end up fighting at and, and how was the weight cut for this fight? Yeah, the weight cut was pretty much the same as the last few. I, I journal all my weights for about three, four weeks out. I journal all my days. I know exactly what I was doing each fight camp, each day out. So I, I kind of try to stay around that same weight so I know exactly that I'm going to make the weight. And I have a nutritionist, Dan Garner, that's we're doing it as scientifically as possible. So there's no guessing if I'm going to make weight. I'm going to make weight. I've done it. I know how. And it sucks every single time. It is the closest thing you can a man can do to giving birth. I would say it's fucking <laughs> horrible. <laughs> okay. it, it, you feel like you're you feel like you're gonna die. You know, there's you have cra- you have headaches. You're completely dehydrated. You don't sleep that night. It's not fun. It's uh, you know. And if anyone says they make it easier. You know, they're probably not cutting as much weight or they're just lying. But, yeah, it sucks. Cutting weight is the worst part about the sport. Um, but the weight cut, with that being said, went went perfect as far as, you know. That how means I, I mastered it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I have mastered it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, re- the rehydration part went perfect, too. That's where a lot of fighters get fucked up. And they, don't, they don't rehydrate. They don't refuel right. They fucking eat too much. They eat what they're not supposed to be eating. They're not drinking the right fluid. And and you have a long time to fuck that up because you weigh in and then you fight way later. So you have a long time to keep fucking that up. You have bubbly guts, your fucking fart sticks, you have diarrhea. There's so much that can go wrong. And I've just got it down to dialed in to where I was feeling fucking good. Thank you. Good work. Proud of you. Now, I feel like all you do is win, you know? That's all I've known you to do, literally, since I've watched you. Even while Buffer's doing the introduction. 17! You go. (laughs) <laughs> and oh yeah I like to think of people watching at bars with the captions and then what they're seeing uh-huh. like wait a second hold on how's this entire thing work but you just won uh, something that has been happening on this particular program since we started on ESPN I believe right now you're at 11 or 12 12, 12. you're at 12 you're at 12 F-bombs that's the most in the history oh, of yeah. ESPN and there's 13, 13. Yeah. Yeah. and there's 13 <laughs> just keep winning champ just keep winning, champ. All I do is win. That's right. Absolute <laughs> crush. Uh, we appreciate that. But speaking of winning, there's something else on the line. Go ahead, comment. Yeah, Sean, another huge win. I believe you will be getting a brand new car. Is that the case? Do you know what car you are being gifted and who is giving it to you again? Yeah, so before I fought, um, Aiden, this streamer, Aiden uh, messaged me. And he's like, bro, I'm going to put so much money on you. If you win, I'm going to buy you a car. I'll be like, damn, that's a big promise. That's fucking crazy. Add that check mark up to 14 real quick. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so he said he's going to give me a car. And that that's kind of where it left off at. And uh, But, yeah, that would be absolutely insane. Yeah. He didn't say what car. He said he's going to let his chat pick. So I don't know wh- wh- where that goes to, but I'm going to go good. Oh, the chat. I'm here for I mean, it. the yes. chat could go a couple different directions. I'm not 100% sure how it will go. They could be like, all right, let's go Toyota Camry. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, they could go Toyota Camry. I'll that's, take a Camry. That, hey, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> could you imagine putting little uh, hubcap spinners on that? Mm-hmm. Not actual Ooh, spinners. Hubcap spinners on hub ca- that Yeah, cool. that would be dope on that. Or they go the, car. Or they go the other day. Uh, the other way. You get like a ghost or like oh. a Rolls Royce. Mm-hmm. Come on. Or like something. Be, yeah. That's the way we're hoping, huh? We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Hey, good luck to the chat. Hey, yeah, good luck. you guys are going to do it. Yeah. The red right pick. That's cool out of Ian Ross. I appreciate the hell out of that. I respect that a lot. I also respect the way you're doing your thing. You have remained yourself through the entirety. Keep crushing it. We're lucky to know you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, talk soon. When's next fight? Do we not? We don't have a clue, right? We don't know. No, I don't know. I mean, UFC does their matchmaking Tuesdays, so maybe they're talking about the Sugar Show. I'm sure they are. Uh, the Sphere is a big deal in Vegas. Mm-hmm. They're saying it could be a one and done. The Sphere, the one time only Mexican mm-hmm. Independence Day. Who bigger to have than your Mexican bantamweight champion, Sugar Sean O'Malley, to defend his title? Uh, in the spear, so that's a possibility. Is if, if I had to guess. Okay, so 
This is just a question because my journalism has not told me with the O'Malley thing in Boston. I did not know you're you are a Mexican male. Uh, sci- uh, scientifically, yes, uh, I'm Mexican. My right. DNA is Mexican. I have a Mexican princess. We have the same DNA. Therefore, how could I not be Mexican? Okay. Boom. Well said. Right. Well said. Ladies and gentlemen. Come, play. Come say hi. Real quick. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. She doesn't want to. <laughs> it's all right. She'll get. She's too big for our show anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. You know, maybe one day we'll be able to. Hey, what's going on? Elena. Oh, yeah. no, not having it. How old? How old? Is, how old there? She's three. Man, that's awesome. I got a 10 month old, man. It's crazy. Every day it's something oh, new. Wow. Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it. I want I want a whole tribe. I want more. I want to keep popping them out. Well, not me, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Bantamweight champion of the world, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Man, that's cool. You hear that? Yeah, that guy just went to war for five yes, months. He, he has a science on how to cut weight. Then his daughter comes around. And he's like, oh, whoop, excuse me. Love her. Mm-hmm. It is awesome. It's a whole new world, this whole kid thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ten months, huh? So is she, like, moving around, walking, oh, yeah. crawling? Well, we're not walking yet. Good. You can. But we are trying. crawling. We are standing. No mm-hmm. rush. Nice. No rush. To we, are, we are in the crib now. Oh, mm-hmm. she climbing out. What's going on? Yep. <laughs> yeah, one of those things. Mm-hmm. Had to get a whole new one because mm-hmm. she's able to lift herself up. I mean, she is awesome. Mom's kicking so much ass. But every time I get to hang out with her, I'm like, man, like her learning her balance. Mm-hmm. Like she'll like back in a uh, couple months ago, like she's fallen. Now she'll like catch herself. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, happens mm-hmm. quick, doesn't it? Now we're talking. Yeah. It's like something as small as that. I'm like, she's learning. She's learning. And then every once in a while, she'll still. Take a tumble. And then you gotta laugh. Oh, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Oh, yeah. So she doesn't cry. Mm-hmm. Yep. Clap. Yeah, and she's clap. Good job. Hey, 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 yep. Wait a day. You certainly just hurt yourself. I'm probably a bad dad, but hey. <laughs> All right, we'll be back, Mignana. We can't thank you enough.